Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out the procedural nature pack for Unreal. Now this is from the Unreal Engine Marketplace, but it is completely free. And it is used for creating nature scenes procedurally in your game, so I guess it's well named. And it's quite easy to use, as we're about to see in a second. As a bonus, we're also going to see a new Sky Pack, both of those that are available free. Now if you're a regular to the channel, you already know why we are covering this. Basically every single month, Unreal Engine or Epic Games are releasing a bunch of content for Unreal Engine for free in the marketplace for a limited time. And this month was no exception. So for the rest of March, these new assets are available for free. Don't worry, I will link this down below. So if you missed the other video, check this out. A bunch of free stuff for Unreal Engine developers. But the ones that we're actually looking at today is the Procedural Nature Pack Volume 1 and then a little bit of Good Sky just because it's quickly covered and quite cool as well. Now, both of those assets are available forever. So no matter when you're watching this video, you should be able to download these assets and be off to the races. Now, speaking of downloading them, it's quite simple. Basically, open it up in the marketplace like so. In, if you haven't bought it yet, it will stay right here to either add to cart or to log in to buy this. Log in, add it to your cart, and then purchase it, and then you are done. That That's all that is required. Um, and in the particular case of, again, this one, it is not time limited, so you can do this whenever you want. And once you've got it, go ahead and uh, go over to your Unreal Engine in the Epic Game Launcher, then Library, and you should find it right here. And then what you're going to want to do is add that to your project. So what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to create a new product. Oh, I didn't want to do the preview. Oh, well. Uh, I'll go ahead and launch Unreal Engine. We're using the uh, beta preview here, which probably shouldn't cause a problem, but we'll find out. And what we're going to do is go ahead and just create a new project and add this in. So next up, new project, like so. Uh, we'll call this um, YouTube Demo. And I don't need starter content. And maximum quality is fine. So we're just going to create a blueprint, a blank blueprint project, and go ahead and create it. And this is going to take a couple of seconds. So I'll just go ahead and pause and I'll come right back. Okay, so we have our newly created project here. Now what we want to do is flip back to the Epic Game Launcher right here. And once again, in our library, we locate our procedural nature pack, which is right here. And we'll go ahead and add it to the project. We will add it to... That's the annoying part, because I'm doing a preview and fine. That's why I didn't want to use the preview version. Sometimes plugins and previews don't play that well together, but this should be just fine. Now I should actually note while this is adding, and it is 1.8 gigabytes in size. So the first time you do this, there is going to be a bit of an install process, but do be aware that this, um, this broke on my other machine. So if you have a problem when you first load their their starter project, just be aware that I've had some problems on some machines and not on others. So while we're here, we're also gonna go ahead and add the Skybox one. So that is better Sky or Good Sky? Good Sky, we'll just add that to our project. And once again, add to project. All right, so our project should now have both of those in it. We're gonna flip on back over here. You will see if we bring this over here, and look in the content browser, you'll see we have Good Sky, and more importantly, we have the Procedural Nature Pack. Procedural Nature Pack is what we're gonna focus on today, and I'll start off by showcasing with their well-created project, and then I will show you an ugly created project right after. And this may take a second, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pause. All right, a few minutes later, if you have not crashed at this point, congratulations, you should be fine because it was always loading this level that I was experiencing crashes. Anyways, here you can see this is what this guy is capable of. And there's a good showcase of the tool. So we've got some uh, materials and um, drawings for creating and doing landscapes here. Uh, we have this dynamic river that you can see runs along this line path that is all numbered as we go. So let's just follow that back to the source. So 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And as you are moving along it, it automatically adapts the water based off the way that gravity is flowing and the way that the water should move. So you should get appropriate reflections and refractions and ripples and waves as it goes. In addition, this tool also gives us the tools to create trees, vines, as you see here. We've got grasses and so on to work with. So you can see you can work and create some pretty beautiful results using this pack. So pretty much everything you're seeing here is part of the procedural nature pack. And now let's go ahead and actually showcase some of this functionality in action. And we're going to start off with the um, we're going to start off with the river, I think, because that's probably the prettiest uh, of the features. It's the shiniest thing anyways. Um, okay, so here we are. We are loaded. So we're going to come down here, go into the content browser. And what you want to locate is in the root, your procedural nature pack. Go in and locate spline blueprints. A lot of the functionality here is spline based. And what we want to do is create an instance of master river spline. Just create that. 
it will load one in your scene. I did not mean to double click it. So now we actually are in the controls of it. But if you want to see how it works, uh, you can dig down and get in here. But what I want to do instead was actually create one in the world. So let's drag that into our world. We'll move it up slightly so you can actually see it. And let's scroll in. There is our river. Pretty exciting stuff. Well, maybe not. But what it is is ultimately just a spline. So what we can do is we can take this endpoint spline, have it selected, hold down Alt, and then just move out. And what you're seeing here is now you notice we have a one and we can just keep going. So basically now let's, let's move over here a bit and we're just gonna alt drag out, create a second point and we can, we can turn it, rotate it so we could have it fit into our world however it makes the most sense for us. And then we can basically, I probably didn't wanna do that because that always causes weirdness. And then what we can do is basically I'll grab that point again, go back here and we'll do one. Uh, another alt drag and here's where it gets impressive. So we're gonna move this to the edge like so and drag that along and we'll do an alt drag again like so and one more. And we could also go back and add another one in. So I could click here and we could right click and add a control point right there and it will automatically insert that point in. So now let's blow your mind a bit. What I can do is I can come here and grab this point that we created and drop it down. And notice how the water is rushing. So basically we just created a waterfall out of it. So oh, I, have an, I have an endpoint that we don't want there. So let's just move that guy down here and we'll move this guy down here. And you basically are creating a water flow dynamically and it's just figuring it out from the changes and the shifts in position. So you see there as we are moving things, it automatically updates the textures that are applied. Now on top of that, there are other settings. Let me just get my details window back open. Oops, I, Jesus, I missed completely. That was sad. All right, here we go. So you see there are a number of different settings you can set for the speed. You can set the speed of the wind, of the river uh, tiling. You've got the material here for the river flow. We can actually change that out. There's a couple of different options. So we can go to B as well if we like that material better. Uh, I'm not sure if there's also different spline meshes. No, there's only the one spline mesh. Uh, but you've got a, a couple of different options for controlling it. You've got two different textures, water surface textures. You can change the speed of it. And then again, the placement of the spline points also controls how things are drawn. So that is probably the, the prettiest thing in this feature. And it gives you the ability to create dynamic water really, really simply. On top of that, we've also got some controls here for creating vines and trees. Now vines are very easy. Once again, they are splines like so. So uh, we can zoom in on this guy. Oops. And I could go ahead again. It is just a normal spline. So I can, you know, right, I can, let's see, select it, right click, add a point, and we can just kind of configure this guy however we wish. We can bend it around however we wish. We can keep adding points to it and add detail as we go. Uh, we've got control so over how things are created along the lines of our, so we could add some branches to it, for example. Uh, we can affect how the wind is going to affect it. We can create how the, how it rolls and twists and bends around, but basically you are creating a vine. Very straightforward and simple. And again, we can scale it around and it's just a matter of manipulating spline points or I can manipulate the entire thing as a whole. So you can create vines very simply and we can also create trees the same way. So we'll go back over here to content browser. We have a uh, master, let's see, I want tree branch spine. So right there, let's create this guy in this world. And I don't know why this is, but you always have to rotate it 90 degrees. And like it, it comes in angled in the wrong direction, actually even more this time. And then this guy works basically the same way. We can either um, select this endpoint, go to move, and then just do an alt, extrude it out. And one thing you're probably noticing is I can also bend and twist the tree however we wish, and it will move accordingly. And then with this guy selected, we can uh, control a number of settings here as well. So we can do um, the size of it. So I could come back up here and go, all right, start at say two and at one, and it'll scale accordingly. Uh, we can control how branches are created on this. So I say add branches, we got two branches in it. And you can set up the yaw pitch and roll of them. So let's see, uh, I always forget which one is which, but I think roll is kind of like the 360 surround of the tree. So what I'm gonna do is change that up to 360. That means that our branches can appear anywhere in a 360 degree arc. So let's go ahead and add a couple of more branches. So let's go say 22. And there we have a plethora of branches. And then you've got controls over like how big the branches can get. I think 
that one will change the maxes. And the cool thing with this actually is instead of just creating trees this way using the various different pieces that you've got here, you can also uh, export this out to FBX. So you can use this as a tree generator and then run those guys in your Max, Maya, Blender, whatever. You don't even need to use this tool in Unreal Engine. You can use this as a procedural tree generator and that's it if you wish. And then once again, I can grab the, the control points and splines and change our trees on the fly. We've also got the ability to specify at what point on the tree we start um, adding branches. I forget which exact setting that was, but it's a it's in here. Uh, da, 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 branches, branches start. All right, so we can move up a bit. So here, let's go eight, and you'll see the tree branches come further up on the tree. And you can just kind of twist around with this until you've got. You can change the the bitch, the sorry, the bitch, uh, the pitch, the yaw, uh, the roll, and that is how the branches are allocated or, or what angle they're on, and so forth. And then we can also come in here and do wind in, uh, intensity, and this is how much the wind is affecting our trees. So you see it update a little bit more, or we could go up to something like five and see that entire tree trunk is getting just wailed about. So let's do six. And you start seeing that tree is more like a willow tree getting wonked around. So you see here, we've got it on kind of a weird angle. We can go ahead and move that guy back up. And there are a bunch of other tools in this guy as well. One of the cool things I'm not gonna demonstrate right now is there are uh, materials for setting up train, and for drawing grass and so on. So if you want to sculpt a, a normal train using the built-in train objects, they've got uh, all the textures are in here. Uh, plus you've got things like foliage and stuff for drawing grass and so on. So let's go into the foliage. You see grass, leaves, and small rocks. Uh, and then we've also got some meshes available in here. So we go here, we can say, uh, so let's say we want to create some boulders in our scene. There are four kinds of boulders available for us, such as this one, this one, this one, and this mossy sucker right here which needs it shader compiled. So we'll come back to it in a second. But as you see, you've got nice rocks for placing around in your world to also work with. And then we have the materials that are being used for everything. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've got various different foliage, uh, the materials being used for your river right here. I got rock materials and so on. And there are uh, train uh, landscapes set up for you. So you've got the four layers you can use for painting uh, your levels across, uh, makes it quite simple to deal with. And yeah, that's probably close to an answer. There's our mossy rock now limited. And there's also a predefined tree. I'm not actually 100% certain why. Uh, but if we go ahead in here, tree with roots, we have a defined and created for us tree that's not procedural. Instead, this is just defined. And we can easily drop it into our world there as well. Uh, using the same basic engine and logic as the other stuff. And like I said, my version was going to be a hell of a lot uglier. But that is basically the dynamic pack. And you can use this to create some pretty cool um, landscapes pretty simply. So it, it does have uh, a lot of power. Now, one of the downsides is you're going to recognize the algorithm. So this is going to be an asset -y flipped kind of thing. But there's no getting away from that these days and age. Uh, and then we got also here, let's, let's go ahead and drop out our sky sphere. So we're just going to create no sphere at all. This is the other new feature that was added. So content browse. Let's go back here to our root. And what we are interested in now is this good sky that I added. Now, good sky is exceedingly easy to use. This is a new sky box. Basically, just come in, drop the blueprint in your world, and you have a new sky box like that. And with it selected, we're going to head back over to details. And here's where the magic really shines. This one's really straightforward. You can come in here and do things like um, change directional light, time of day. And then we've got a bunch of presets we can work with. So I come in here and I say, I want more of a Dark Souls, dark, deathy vibe. And boom, we are now in Dark Souls. Or say I am in a forest, or I am in a desert, or I am, you know, midnight storm or so on. And then each one, you can change the, the coverage. You can change this effects. And let me just switch that back. This is a storm effect. That's yeah, not really doing too much. All right, Midnight Stars, let's go back again. I like the, well, let's do death style. I don't know why that's death, but uh, we can change the cloud types from stratus to cumulus to Ciriform. And you can see it is just basically a more advanced skybox than what comes out of the uh, um, pack. And, and this is just really simple to use. Those are your simple settings, not a whole bunch going on. Now, this one is selective. It's only available for certain uh, versions here. Now, I do wish that as you switch between these, um, you could 
figure out if these are actually going to work as opposed to just tabbing between and finding it doesn't do anything. Uh, but yeah, you can create sky boxes exceedingly simply with the uh, Good Sky add-on. So those are two of the new add-ons that were included as part of the March drop. Again, there were a couple of others. I'll focus them up here in a second. I, I thought the procedural nature pack was probably the most interesting to me. This 9,000 source procedural swords ones also looks pretty interesting. So I will link that other video down below. And let me know if you want me to go into any of depth with the other ones that the time limited ones, but the ones I found the most interesting personally were uh, this one and this one's just, it, it had good synergy with the procedural nature pack. So I covered it as well. Uh, but yeah, that's the procedural nature pack. What do you think of it? Are you impressed? I know there's a lot of this kind of stuff out there already. This is just one more tool for your toolbox. And, and I, I'm just impressed by uh, how big of a tool box I have these days. So, so Unreal giving away more and more of this content. The stuff is just, it, it's getting very simple to create a game, which I guess is kind of a double-edged sword at times. But let me know what you thought of this content. Are you shocked by how good it was? Are you indifferent to it? Or you just don't care? Let me know. Comments down below. And once again, let me know if there was anything else here that you really wanted to see covered. This one's pretty straightforward. It's just a PBR material pack. Uh, this one's a dungeon creation kit. This one is procedural swords. This one's just animations, and this one is for uh, gun weapons controllers. So if anything on there also looks really, really interesting to you guys as a whole, let me know comments down below, and maybe I can cover something else before the end of this month so you know if it is worth downloading or not. So that is the Procedural Nature Pack Volume 1, and then a little bit of Good Sky. Hopefully you guys found that somewhat interesting at least, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.